If we're going to ask African Americans to vote for us, we cannot take you or your vote for granted. We can't just show up at election time and say the right things and think that's enough. We can't start building relationships a few weeks before a vote. We have to demonstrate a sustained commitment to building opportunity, creating prosperity, and righting wrongs, not just every two or four years, not just when the cameras are on and people are watching, but every single day. That was Hillary Clinton making her case to African-American voters yesterday at the National Action Network's 25th annual convention. And joining us now, the host of MSNBC's Politics Nation and president of that network, Reverend Al Sharpton. You were there with her and you inaugurated, gave her a different title. Al. Well, what happened was at the end of her speech, she quoted the Bible <laughs> and she did it very well. So I was teasing saying, Reverend, Hillary Clinton. I didn't introduce her that way. That was on her way out. And Bernie Sanders is speaking today. We'll see how well he does with, with scripture at the end of his speech. What did she quote? What verse did she quote? She quoted, be not uh, weary in uh, well-doing. Yeah. Uh, we will reap if we faint not. And uh, it was the end of a long policy speech because we're very clear that we want to hear concrete right. how you're going to get there. But she knows that a lot of National Action Network are ministers right. and come out of the Martin Luther King tradition of ministries. Yeah. And so, she quoted the Bible. So there's a rising fear among black Americans that, that Democrats are just taking them for granted. Right. Know that they're going to line up and vote for the Democratic candidate no matter what. Do you feel, uh, do you feel that Hillary Clinton uh, will, will be different? I think in that, that she's going to have to make that case. And I think that she tried to make that yesterday because she had delegates from all over the country. And these are actives. These are people that move voters. Right. And uh, I think that she is, has to make that case because not only does she have to get a huge portion of the black vote, which she's been getting every primary, right. it's the turnout. The problem is not 90% of the black vote, it's 90% of what black vote. And I think that that is what's going to be critical in November if she's a nominee or Sanders. The problem on the Sanders side that he has to make a case this morning is the best he's done with the black vote in the primaries is 30%. So he's resonating. Huge crowd last night in Greenwich Village, right. but not so in Harlem on Sunday. So I right. think that they've got to make a case on why I need to come out, what is the reason I need to be standing in line if that it comes to that as it did in So 12. she's been campaigning now for two years and you don't feel that she's yet made that case? No, I think she's made the case clearly in terms of the primaries because she's getting the overwhelming right. majority. The question is does she make a case in November to have turnout? I don't know. I don't feel that yet. I think she's beginning there, and I think that Bernie Sanders would have to make that case as well. We hear him this morning. But there, it, there needs to be the excitement. You, you must remember, and I said it at the convention yesterday, Steve, this is a peculiar place we've never been in American history for black America and white America. We've never been where we're going to see which white will replace a black president. So this is a very sensitive election that I think most of the media is missing. We're saying, wait a minute, Barack Obama and that family's leaving. Who's moving in and why should I enthusiastically come out? The 94 crime bill plays yep. a big role in this campaign. Absolutely. So uh, it didn't begin the age of mass incarceration. It began well before 1994. But what do you want to see a, a president, the next president of the United States, do to implement things that were not in the 1994 crisis? How we're going to repair the damage that was done, whether it was intended or not, in terms of those families that were broken up, commuting sentences, and the policy going forward. So do you, she do you, addressed do you blame, some of that yesterday. Bill Clinton for that? There's a big... Big well, I was against it then. Yeah. I mean, the other night on uh, Rachel's show, uh, Steve's show, right. me talking in 94 against the bill. Right. Because I thought it had good parts, but I thought that it would lead to what it did. It uh, would a lot of incarceration Should increase. Should Clinton apologize? Well, it's not about apology. It's about he's already said it went too far. Yeah. Now the question is, what would Clinton or Sanders do to rectify? How do you correct it? Eric Holder and Loretta Lynch have said to their U.S. attorneys that you cannot ask for 
these stiff sentences for nonviolent crimes. Right. That we need to start commuting sentences, what Barack Obama as president has done. Right. Rectify. If he got, he said at a convention last year, Bill Clinton, it did go too far. If he got up today at Nash Action Network and said, I'm sorry, that doesn't rectify anything. Right. We need to really turn around the impact and what is done to two generations of African Americans. All right, Reverend Al, congratulations on 25 years. Thank you. 25 more to come. Thank you very much. And I want you to know Joe Scarborough spoke at National Action Network in those 25 years and, be before Hillary yeah, showed up. And yeah. when I finished, all the people said, Amen. Amen, brother. I don't know what was wrong with them that year. <laughs> exactly. They didn't invite a lot of those. They came to join the Scarborough No, country. I'll tell you why. Baptist Anderson, Baptist. Coming up, Donald Trump says he's not the first Republican to be trailing the Democrat in head-to-head -head polls. Jimmy Carter wanted to run against Ronald Reagan. He said, oh, please let Reagan win. And he was so far behind Reagan. And by the time the election took place, it was a, a big victory, an easy victory for Reagan. That's what happens. That's what happens because you aim your fire at that person. We're going to be talking to the former special assistant to President Reagan, James Rosebush, about the changing face of the Republican Party. Morning Joe, coming right back. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.